you're not wondering about the sugar on a string thing. I think it sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally try some sugar on a string. I actually did that when I went to Maker Central this year because it was my first time and we arrived at one of the many entrances and then it looked like the main entrance to me and people were queuing up so I just went over and like is this a queue for the badge and like uh, are you here for the dentist convention? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Maker Central? Oh that's over there. Uh, so Because I didn't think you were. I'm like what did you mean about that? <laughs> but yeah. It didn't look like a dentist, and uh, you know, the smiles on all the people in that queue <laughs> it didn't match. <laughs> my, my daughter really wanted to go to the dentist convention. She was hoping there'd be free samples for some reason. Of what teeth? Of what teeth. Dentifix. <laughs> yeah. I, think she, I think she wanted free toothpaste. I don't know. Right. You know, 13 years old. Who knows? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I, I've, I've been my fair share to the dentist, and there, there is nothing that they do that I would have done, even if it was for free, just for fun. So, <laughs> nope. Come in and try. I remember there was one year um, at Makers. I can't remember how many years ago it was now, but it was the same weekend that they had a massive vaping convention, and all of the main um, corridors and sort of connecting halls were at just clouds and clouds i mean everybody needed like gps or like fog lights on to try and sort of navigate their way through it was absolutely ridiculous it's all these plumes of sticky cloud everywhere it was horrible so i'd take the dentist convention anytime over that and that was not not pleasant yeah but that being said i think i could probably have spotted a lot of fancy tools in the dentist convention that i could find useful in my workshop because I'm very interested in the tools that are on the tray when I'm at the dentist, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure I, I have half of those. And of course, if I could somehow detach my jaw and work on it, because working in a, a mirror is it's kind of awkward. Uh, and uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I could have done a decent job at fixing my teeth if I could just put them in a vice in my workshop. And, <clears throat> Yeah, the little mirrors they have on the end of those could be quite handy in the workshop, yeah. couldn't they? When you're yeah. trying to access. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm all for you know having a go yourself, but I think some things you should just leave to the professionals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe root canals is something that shouldn't be a DIY project. Yeah, but well, I, I remember one guy. He actually bought the glue that they use on the teeth, and like, uh, yeah, I went on AliExpress, and for like ten dollars, you could get that UV light pen that they use to harden it. So you could just, uh, yeah, use this uh, dental glue, and you can just make any shape you want, and put some parts together, and then you just put some UV light on it for ten seconds, and it's yeah. strong as crap. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind all the tools. I mean, if I saw some on a flea market i would probably get them but i would not put them in my own mouth or any mouth that <laughs> someone that i loved either uh, but <laughs> as you say the mirrors and the small hooky things they yeah. look, look, look really useful my daughter went last week actually to get measured up for braces and obviously i didn't take it but they told me all about it when they got back <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. did they tell you all about it yeah, apparently there's a they have a little pen that they point at the teeth now instead of doing the molds they point the pen at the teeth and it takes a photograph of the teeth and puts a an image up on the screen a 3d image up of the screen and then they do the bottom teeth and then the kids have to bite together and they'll do another take another shot and it aligns all the teeth in the jaw i just thought that was amazing it's all a bit bloody fancy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's is. a bit Star Trek. Yeah. No wonder it's so bloody expensive to get to the dentist. Oh, God. <laughs> and we had to, had to bite, we had to that bite down on those awful moulds with all that gummy stuff, stuff overspilling. Yeah, and, oh. yeah you, you mm. might feel a, a choking sensation for the next five minutes. and uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> like, oh, that, that was horrible, yeah. <laughs> And when, they, when they took it out, you thought all your teeth were going to come with the thing, didn't you, as well? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so did you expect to be covering these topics tonight? No. So I didn't expect <laughs> to be reminded of when I had chew-its 
when I was there was this brand of sweet and they were the strongest yeah. sweets. And I remember oh. once chewing on one of those and as I pulled my teeth apart, <laughs> it lifted and pulled my filling out of its tooth and crunching <laughs> down on the Ugh. That, oh, was, nice. that was a trip down memory lane I was expecting to go down. <laughs> I love chew it. Yeah, chew it. You can't get them anymore, can you? <laughs> oh, they probably call something else now, aren't they? But at least opal fruits are now back to opal fruits, aren't they? Are they? Yeah. They were Starburst for a while, weren't they? They've been mm-hmm. back branded? I don't know. How would you no. describe that? Come to their senses. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to be happy until they make Snickers marathons. Again. There we go. That's that's the obvious <laughs> obvious connection there. Bring back Pacers. <laughs> I don't think I know what one of those is. What? Pacer is like a um, it's like it's a, a heart attack thing. No, it's. Uh... <laughs> Um, Was it like marzipan in a roll? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call that Stolen, Phil. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they do. <laughs> no, they were um, spearmint chews. Oh. In a green and white wrapper. Weren't they just called spearmints? Isn't that just after eight? No, oh, I, I, I distinctly chocolate. remember them. <laughs> and the green stripes were slightly wavy on the wrappers, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, I've got no memory of those. Oh, I thought no? they were called spearmints. No, those are the big, both... those are the big ones. Um, Wrigley's spearmints, big ones. But the Pacers were the same size as um, same size as Chewits, small square ones. Yeah, Pacers. I do remember those. Yes, I didn't remember they were called Pacers. Yeah, I don't remember those. You, you two are clearly older than me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, on that note, yeah, it's been lovely to stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> Go back in there. Oh, the good old days. I remember when polos were 8p a tube. Mm. <laughs> oh, sweets were brilliant when we were kids. Yep. Remember and... those, those drawstring bags of um, gold nuggets? Mm-hmm. And then it sort of became chewing gum or bubble gum. Oh, I might, I might remember that. Do you remember those? Well, they yeah. had them in Woolworths. <coughs> Again, if I could find those, then you may have been the, the recipient of them, KJ, but, you know, customs are small sports, what can I say? Yeah. I think yeah, it, was a, it was a candy that my grandparents used to buy to my parents, like, every once in a while. Uh, and it was, like, this brown sugar, but you got it on a string, so they actually had like a, a a sugar scissor in the store. So they just cut off how much you wanted and put it in like a a pointy paper bag, and that was like a classic from when there was a child. And there was this one store that sold everything sewing and knitting related, and they had that in the corner. And I, rem- I still remember that as a kid. Of course, you have all the like the the like the branded candy and so on, but they actually sold brown sugar on a string. And that was half the fun because you could actually get that hemp string with the the brown sugar on. You can just eat it off the string. It was like eating <laughs> strawberries off a straw, just uh, very much more unhealthy for your teeth. God. I'm just thinking what genius thought to put sweets in a wool shop. Brilliant. That's that's always going to end well, isn't it? You're not wondering about the sugar on a string thing. Yeah, I think but it sounds crazy. Really... <laughs> <laughs> I'll totally try some sugar on a string. <laughs> Maybe that's what you should make for markets. It's uh, it's going to have a comeback. Uh, have you, have you got any? Of... Yes. <laughs> Ew, if you've got spread. any of that sugar, if you got any of that sugar on a nylon string, it's, it's, I'll it's tell you what. Yeah, I mean, I mean pe- people Next time go... I'm trying to upcycle a whole load of old flipping twine, carbon twine, <laughs> I'm just dip it in some, yeah, yeah. Yeah. some granulated <laughs> sugar. There you go, kids. And of course, down memory lane. Yeah. people always bring kids to the market, right? So you just use that to lure the kids in, just like you do the dogs, and then you have a friend, a couple of booths down that uh, showcase the newest in dentistry equipment. Yeah. Extraordinary. I do miss going to those lovely old sort of, village 
fairs when we were kids where there would just be random stalls full of knackered old tools and it was just absolutely swarming with men of pensionable age who were just rummaging <laughs> through boxes. No one had the faintest idea what half of this stuff was. Most of it was all covered in, in rust. But um, there was always one little nugget in there. My dad used to spend yep. hours and hours in those places. But I think they are getting They're getting far and few between. And when you stumble over them, they are very overpriced. And especially here in Norway after the pandemic. Now everyone needs some rustic old tool uh, amongst their live, love, bluff signs in the windowsill. So <laughs> yes. and, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you're, you're, you're competing with all of those. Like, I just want to buy that metal pliers. I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for it because <clears throat> you're going to hang it on your wall. It's like, so, yeah. I did a car boot sale on Sunday. And um, towards the end, towards the end, when it was sort of tailing off a bit, I thought I'd go and have a wander around and see what's what. And I found this chap selling loads of old tools, um, not in this traditional, new traditional car boot where it's just a load of Nick Power tools. It was genuinely a lot of old tools. <laughs> <laughs> and he was there, sort of like, oh, pound a tool, pound a tool. And I picked up these old, what I from a distance, they looked like a quite a nice pair of old tin snips. And it's, yeah, I was having an eye about it. It was 50p. And then as I was holding them, I realized that as I turned it over, it like this has just been bodged together with any old parts that you can find. And I tried operating them and they just fell apart in my hand. <laughs> I said, um, do you know what? I'm going to leave them. Thanks. <laughs> it was just a lot of, I suppose, the really nice old vintage stuff that we like has all disappeared and has become, you know, a lamp now. And now we're just left with, you know, twenty year old screw fix tools which were not that brilliant yeah. to begin with. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, criminally, people just dump it. It just breaks my heart the stuff that yeah. gets thrown out these days. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh... yeah, a couple of years ago, um I'm just walking down my street and we have a scrap metal man still come round. Mm. Yeah, we our do our area. And um one of the neighbours had left two uh, planes outside um wood planes and i walked down to the co-op and thought i'm going to pick those up on the way back and by the time i got back the scrap metal man had had them so oh. that's them gone to be melted down oh. <laughs> <Buttered>. <laughs> yeah. yeah you gotta be quick yeah it's quite handy yeah. though actually um dan's one of my neighbors and he's always got his his van up but oh, even now i still see there's some the, the road just adjacent to mine is all these lovely old victorian um terrace houses and um people are still ripping out the old iron fireplaces and oh god why <laughs> oh, so yeah dan dan mm. gets those on the back of his van ready to take and do whatever with he yeah. he does well that's not that's not too new i remember my old man smashing up the cast iron bath in our oh. house because we were, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's beautiful great big ornate scroll top cast iron bath with oh. enamel Set at it with a sledgehammer because we're getting a lovely new avocado bathroom suite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get that horrible old Victorian abomination out of here. Yeah. We're getting some green fiberglass in. Best yes. there is. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you've got, to, lovely. you've got to smash it up just to get it out of the house, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, but you can't lift it. No. <laughs> we had an avocado bathroom as well. What was with that? There was one in this house when we first bought it 15 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, loved it. Avocado <laughs> or, uh, or burgundy red is another one, which was, <laughs> which had just yeah, get over the year just faded into sort of, you know, pink. <laughs> <laughs> I get an allergic reaction to, to those. Yeah. I can't stand them. Yeah. Uh, avocado and gold taps. Classy. Nice. <laughs> one of our old neighbors and then um, back where I grew up. They had one of those beautiful old 1960s kitchens with the floral wallpaper, the bright, massive, great big orange and yellow, that floral that's now very, very much in vogue. Amazing. And um, fair play, <laughs> they stuck to their guns and they hung onto that kitchen for about 40 years. I think the oven was the only thing that eventually died a death and needed replacing. <laughs> but, oh, it was stunning. Absolutely beautiful, that kitchen. It was great. I... Oh, 
I, I so regretted I didn't save the picture because a friend of mine um, just sent me an ad for a house that was listed for sale. Like they have built the house, decorated it in the early 70s, and they haven't done anything to it. And the funny thing was, it's like, all right, go and find a bathroom and tell me when you find a toilet. And then it became a scavenger hunt. So, all right, I'm going to find a bathroom. And I'm like, and everything was tapestry, every room and the same floral tapestry. And when it came to the bathroom, they have actually had custom enameling on the toilet and the sink and everything in the same matching pattern that you had oh, on wow. the tapestry. <laughs> so the toilet and everything was just like blending in. It was like looking at one of those <laughs> pictures where they tell you to focus behind the picture and a, a horse will appear or something like that <laughs> if you really do like, focus your eyes you can see yeah, the yeah. toilet <laughs> <laughs> and of course my, my friend being like born in the 70s and we could remember the aesthetics from our childhood rooms uh, somewhat and like you should buy it, but you should keep it like that for a year because we're going to have to have some very cool 70s uh, parties before we redecorate that house. But yeah. yeah, but it went for a lot of money. And uh, what happened to it? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if that's brave or a bit risky having almost a camouflage toilet. <laughs> <laughs> risky. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ris that risky at best, yeah. How much you like cleaning? But, but I think that that aesthetic from the 70s and with the, the the tapestry and so on it it wasn't it was in the budget segment but what they have done to like everything the porcelain and so on they have spent a lot of money on it so it's like you have spent a lot of money to make it look that crappy and that that's a, <laughs> that that's a feat in itself and I, I was properly amazed just by the craftsmanship not the aesthetics obviously but yeah yeah, you have no idea how much it costs to look this terrible. <laughs> Isn't that what Dolly yeah. Parton said? Yeah. yeah I spent like an awful lot yeah. of money to look this cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She based her whole look on a hooker, didn't she? That she met yeah. when she was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> That's the coolest looking woman in, yeah. <laughs> in the city. Oh, yeah. But I, I, don't, I didn't see... Uh, Miley Cyrus uh, said she, she communicates with Dolly Parton a lot. Uh, it made me think of uh, when Phil said he didn't have a camera because he didn't really care for what he was doing, basically. And I thought Miley Cyrus said she sends a text and then someone that works for Dolly Parton have to resend that to a fax because she's just operating by fax. She has a mobile phone for ringing and so on, but she doesn't send texts, so she just write handwritten messages back and she fax it and then someone else just make that happen into a message for someone and it's like <laughs> then we're double backing to the one having your own personal assistant i, I would do something like that i'm, I'm just going to do handwritten notes from now on <laughs> yeah no, i think i read that. I, I read that the other day doesn't wasn't it ah uh, so it's something about her lawyer is the only person that she knows that's still got a fax machine or something so she has to go. She was these faxes just come through to this one place, so they have to go and get them from there. Yeah. Unless it's unless you live in Germany, my my wife work in publishing, and sometimes they have to do uh, make agreements and uh, buy the rights for German books that will be translated into Norwegian and, or English and. Every time when she's talking to a German company, ah, oh, we'll we'll send you a fax with the documents. <laughs> what, what, we we haven't had a fax since eighty four. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but we have the fax. We do that. We send our legal papers by fax, and yeah, but we don't have a fax. Can't you understand that? It's like uh, they are very outdated in some manner. So a fax machine is uh, still very much in use in Germany. It's still very much in use in uh, education <laughs> as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the amount of faxes I have to send, like purchase orders, where you know companies will only accept a purchase order by fax. You can't email it to them. Wow. You've got to wow. fax it to them. To... 
Why? And you're simultaneously negotiating AI integration into that same academic institution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that was not, it, it's not us, it's suppliers. There's so, wow. so lots of suppliers out there. Who but that just pisses me off facts. then. <laughs> because here, here you have companies obviously making money and they make it work by fax. And Sarah mm. and I can't be bothered setting up a, a TikTok shop without going crazy. I mean, we should just get. <laughs> I mean, we should uh, co-hire a, a fax How do machine. How they do it? What's their yeah. secret? <laughs> it's, it's the fax oh, yeah. machine. <laughs> oh, I want to send the fax. <laughs> and I, I only do my adverts on this uh, teletext uh, service on the uh, television. <laughs> <laughs> The only way I'm booking a holiday. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> I often wonder what what current technologies are going to be the current young generation's version of you know the cassette player or the yeah the CD. Yeah. What I'm wondering mm. is what will be the last piece of technology I will learn or care to learn yeah because i feel like i watched a lot of people who have sort of okay drawn a line in the sand i'm not learning a new thing after this you... like my mother she drew that line in the sand in the early 90s so she can <laughs> she can use a cd player but not a dvd player the, the line goes there <laughs> because I, mean, I i thought she, well technology is not going to advance that much after the early 90s surely and so she's stuck to her guns and <laughs> She does not know what a computer is, more or less, and smartphones, no way. Um, so. Not not to ruin your day, but you probably already own that tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ho- hopefully, I have some years. <laughs> I've actually learned something new, but yeah. But someday that's going to come. I'm no. drawing my line in the sand. No, I, 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 I think I'm almost... I mean, you never know what's going to come around the corner, and you know, some amazing product might might come out, which will revolutionise your entire life. It won't, but <laughs> it'll they'll, take all your time. They will try and sell it to you as the thing. Um, but yeah, it's like about a year ago, I got the, a fanciful idea that I wanted to buy an Apple Watch, and these things are not cheap. No. So I, I I applied my my logic of of no whimsy to it of for every hundred pounds it costs wait a week and then by the time four weeks five weeks have passed it's like I don't really want one no because I don't know what it's for <laughs> I don't oh, know you've gonna... got a Google Watch haven't you me. Was, was he, did you say you've got no, a Google Watch? No, Tim. That's Tim. Oh, is it Tim? Yeah, Tim's got it, okay. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that Google had that. Because um, I'm obviously, I'm looking into sort of all sorts of alternatives for panic alarms and, you know, things that monitor, like, falls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but an Apple Watch is would be an extravagant overindulgence to get as a mm. security um, device for my mum. But I don't, would I use it? I don't know. Do we just sort of age ourselves out of these technological advancements because we just try and quantify so. every ridiculous penny well, of it? I asked a few people what they use it for. They said, oh, well, it's brilliant for you know, making hand-free calls. Why are you making hands-free calls? Why can't you just use your phone? Yeah. Yeah. Or you get all your notifications. Well, I have all notifications turned off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I've, been, I've, been on, I've been on silence since 2011. <laughs> exactly. so. I get phone calls and texts. Everything else can wait until I look at it. <laughs> you know, it's not important. So it's like, I really, I cannot justify buying one of these things because it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything other than need charging every day. <laughs> oh, what, yeah, what you the... become a slave to all this managing and this, all this kit, don't you? Mm. And when the batteries then decide that the um, optimization is knackered, batteries great. you can't replace. Brilliant. Yeah. All good fun. I thought you were going to say with the Apple Watch, Phil, uh, applying your, what was it, 
thing of whimsy to it or whatever. Yeah. I thought you were going to say you waited four weeks and then a new model came out and it was £100 more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's the I thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm mean, going dyed in the wool Apple fanboy, but even I can't <laughs> can't justify one of those. No. I can't even figure out how to work an Apple phone. My daughter's got one. I'm so used to the Android system. Yeah, I hate it. Oh dear. <laughs> it's a sea of Android users. <laughs> right, so. Yeah. Ah, never mind, you know. Not everybody can be right. <laughs> no, I think it's the only good. thing that I could, if if it survives that a, an Apple Watch could basically be like a, a wrist bound personal assistant, I'd find the money from somewhere tomorrow. Um, mm. But. Well, Samsung must have an equivalent. Um, Android, I'm sure they, they do. That's probably the one that yeah. Tim's got or something very similar. Yeah. But then all these voice activated assistants, I mean, they're all awful. Mm. Yeah. You know, some are better yeah. than others at some things, but they are all crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I've tried quite a few, like mostly sort of um, uh, like calendar organizers and ones that have some of them, like, like you said, Phil. Um, there are bits of some of them which are great, but generally they're all they're all a bit lacklustre, aren't they? So mm. to be able to combine all of them would be great. But, you know, some, of the, some, of the some of them are great. I mean, we'd be, have so much burnt food in our house if it wasn't for our Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Just literally use that as a food timer. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, uh, my, I'm from my, time... my oven's got a timer on it. <laughs> when it yes, beeps, so it you turn it off. <laughs> yeah, so is mine. I, I can't see the buttons to operate it. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted this uh, smart watch uh, but of course I don't need it so I do almost the same as you Phil and the only thing I well, the selling point for me is that I have a few watches from before which I really like but they're all now out of juice and it's it's getting kind of expensive and I have to drive to somewhere to get a new battery put in and that's so expensive that all right if i want to do that on my two or three watches and i can put that into a smart watch which i can charge and then of course i also thought that if i have it with a, a e-sim in it i don't have to use my phone with me all the time so it's like a detox from my phone but people can get a hold of me but that is just trying to convince myself that but you don't need it and then i stumbled over a, a tool shop here and it like um, i think it's like five six dollars or something and you can actually buy your own battery replacement kit for your watch so that's going to be my solution i can just batteries change the batteries cheap. myself yeah. Uh, yeah yeah a thing for a case back tool is cheap <laughs> yeah yeah you could probably replace the batteries for the next sort of Oh, God, no, what, 30 years and still not be anywhere near the cost of a smartwatch, which will be obsolete yeah. in seven. Yeah, probably yeah. for the rest of my life, I, uh, if I just buy enough batteries. So, yeah. Oh, as as long as it works, though. because mm. I have the one wristwatch that I, for the life of me, can't get the back of it. No matter. <laughs> I've tried all the tricks and I have like there are three others that they just props of yes it should but this one i can't change the battery and i hate that one so much if only you had some <laughs> dentist tools to help you out yeah, yeah. if uh, yeah. <laughs> and an and assistant to do it for you yeah. <laughs> yes and the, the problem is when you finally break it it's like oh it was counterclockwise <laughs> <laughs> yeah it could probably be something like that because i mean i take it out like every six months or so and, and try and fiddle and use some kind of knife and try to pry it and almost cut myself and then throw it in the back of the cupboard again. And then I think, no, I, I'm, I can probably figure it out. No. Nope. Next time I'm just so going to hit it a little bit harder. Just a little bit harder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next time I'm taking out the angle grinder. Yeah. There we go. Just take it to a shop. <laughs> Let them do it. <laughs> a happy... I won't admit def defeat. <laughs> a happy medium, solar powered watches. There we go. Never needs a battery, but is is dumb that it'll last forever. <laughs> it tells the time. Actually... Maybe it'll do show the date as well. 
I do actually have one of these wind up uh, pocket watches that I got as a gift. Uh, uh, and uh, that works brilliantly. It, it lags a bit behind every hour, but I mean, it's, so do I at the end of the business day. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a good hour behind you mentally. Sync with your so, watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time was better when no one had it. Or, or you, you synced up your watches. Well, what time do you have? Oh, that's five minutes ahead of me. Well, we split the difference, and that's probably the correct time. Grand well there. <laughs> yeah. I think while we're on the subject of time, I think we'll uh, probably think we're out of time. I think we're about done for today, I think. Beautiful segue. Say so. <laughs> Ta-ta. <laughs> Ta-ta. <laughs> Mr. Chumbly Water signing out. Roger. <laughs> what, what? Now we just relax and keep recording. <laughs> <laughs>